nice to nice to see your face. Uh, sorry if I mispronounce your name, but Ogeno Room. Is that right? It's pronounced as the Ogene Rume. Ogene Rume, okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's a, uh, it's a native name. Yeah, I like it. It's nice yeah, to uh, nice to see you in person. I know we've been in contact for a couple years now. Yeah, yeah. Same here. <laughs> My name is uh, pronounced Eli, by the way. Come again. Uh, but the way to pronounce my name is Eli. Eli. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's uh, that's nice. Okay, so I believe you can start. Uh, of course, as other participants join, they would um, partake participate in the lecture. The good news is that due to technology, this webinar is being recorded on YouTube. And so all other members, all the young professional members can always be part of this by watching the video on YouTube. Okay, so for those that have joined, a very warm welcome. And thank you so much for being part of the Society of Petroleum Engineers Abuja section YP quarterly lecture. Of course, today's theme is on the application of data analytics in the upstream petroleum operations. And we are so lucky, we are so excited to have a senior reservoir engineer with SORTEC in the USA who has joined us here today. I'd like to say one welcome to Eli Skins. Thank you so much sir, for joining us. Hi, hello. No problem. Okay. Happy to be here. Okay. Of course, still here with us, which has joined us here, is the convener for this lecture. Of course, we speak of the Young Professionals Chairperson of the Society of Petroleum Engineers Abuja Section, Engineer Ugenerume Ugolo. A warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you for joining yeah. us here, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Akpan. Okay. We also have here with us the alternate YP chair of the SP Abuja Section, the person of Daniel Olagunju. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you for joining us, Daniel. Yeah, thank you, Akwan. I appreciate it. Okay. I want to say a warm welcome to other amazing participants. Uh, so I can see, I, I can see Sin. Sin, thank you for joining. Abdurrahman Aliyu, thank you for joining. Musa Abubka, thank you for joining. Of course, we are in the energy industry and we understand that we are so key about safety. So for this event to start this endeavor, that if you are in a crowded environment, we know we are in the COVID-19 pandemic area, please endeavor to make use of your face mask and of course sanitize your hands when necessary. And if you are home, also endeavor not to carry your phone, your device to the kitchen so as not to have an explosion with the gas. And the last but not the least of a safety brief, if you're not speaking, we can advise that you leave your phone on mute, leave your device you're using for this lecture on mute. Once again, thank you and welcome to this YP lecture. Switching gears immediately, we can see we have the welcome address, which is the next item on the agenda. So I'd love to most respectfully request a YP chairperson for his welcome address. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Akban, for the um, introduction. So on behalf of um, SP Abuja section, the young professionals in SP Abuja section, I uh, welcome everyone to this um, our first quarterly lecture uh, for this quarter, which is titled Application of Data Analytics in Upstream uh, Petroleum um, Operations. Because uh, right from the pandemic, we've been the the trend in the industry has been um, uh, digitalization of the industry, data analytics. So thinking of uh, how we can run the industry in a different way. And this was what brought about the idea of um, doing a lecture on application of data analytics in the upstream petroleum operation so that we as young professionals will be able to see the need for us to acquire this uh, very app skill. And today in our midst, we have um, an erudite scholar 
was so very um was many years of experience in the use of data analytics in upstream operations who would not just only uh show us the applications but we're also going to learn from his um, worth of experience on how we can apply data analytics in um, upstream um, petroleum operations so on behalf of the young professionals of sp abuja section i welcome each and every one of us to a quarterly lecture for this quarter. Thank you. Of course, thank you for the brief and insightful. Thank you so much, YP Chairperson. Okay. So at this juncture, we'd love to switch gears immediately to the lecture. And of course, on the screen, you can see the profile of our lecturer for today. Our lecturer, Elias Keynes, is a senior reservoir engineer with Sotec in the US. He also helps to teach petroleum data analytics and oil field economics at Colorado Schools of Mines. He has a BA in international business from the University of Akron, BS Petroleum Engineering from Colorado Schools of Mines, and an MS Data Analytics from Colorado State University. He specializes in reservoir simulation for enhanced oil recovery and has worked on world-class reservoirs all around the world, including the Middle East, Africa, Canada, US, and South Africa. He has not been to Nigeria, but he will soon be in Nigeria. Please help me welcome for his speech and lecture, the senior reservoir engineer with Sotec USA, Eli Skin. Sir, the virtual stage is yours. Great. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. I will share my screen now and uh, go through some slides that I've put together. Okay, can you see this? Can you see Very well, presentation? we see your screen. We see your Great. screen, sir. Great. Yeah, I think um, uh, the introduction pretty much covered a lot of what I have presented on this slide here, uh, but I'll reiterate some stuff. My name is Eli Skeens. I live in Morrison, Colorado. <clears throat> I'm currently at Surtex office in Golden, Colorado. Uh, where we've been located since 1979. <clears throat> uh, I also help teach some classes at the Colorado School of Mines, uh, specifically uh, the Petroleum Data Analytics class. Uh, we went through the degrees that I have. Those were great fun and, and a lot of time to, to get through, but I've got them all done now. Um, my main skill sets are reservoir numerical simulation, uh, specifically in enhanced oil recovery, which is uh, tertiary forms of uh, field development for conventional reservoirs. Uh, I also have uh, skills in oil field economics. Uh, so in the past couple years, I've been working on <clears throat> doing economic evaluations for assets that uh, different parties are interested in purchasing here in the United States, um, mineral rights can be owned by the public. Uh, so private companies, uh, including our own, are oftentimes interested in purchasing uh, different oil fields uh, in the US. So in order to do that, you have to try and use reservoir engineering techniques to evaluate how much, how much those assets are worth based on how much oil uh, everyone thinks is is underground. Uh, I also am proficient, um, I would say full, fully proficient in Python. So I use Python uh, most days. I've been using it for uh, professionally maybe four years at this point. <clears throat> Began self-taught in Python. Um, when I was a petroleum engineering student, I got interested in Python and uh, began to self-teach uh, beyond what was available at my university. After that, uh, I recognized that people people like you to have degrees, 
Uh, so I got a master's of science in data analytics. Um, in that program, I learned a lot more Python as well as a lot of uh, classical database architecture, um, which leads itself to my uh, the final skill set I've added there, which is SQL. So if you're unfamiliar, SQL is a, <clears throat> is a type of lang object oriented language that's used to query relational databases. Uh, in today's day and age of big data, uh, data oftentimes stored in a relational database, which uh, somebody has to query in order to, to gain insights from that data. I've listed some publications at the bottom there uh, the first two are SPE papers, uh, not related directly to data analytics. Uh, the third, the third link that I've shared there is uh, a link to my medium.com account. So I've published three articles on that website so far. Um, I've been contracted by Analytics Vidya, which is an Indian-based analytics company to. Uh, help help write some articles pertaining to data analytics so you can find those on this link um, and so everybody knows the presentation i'm showing here has been shared in the chat so feel free to download that and uh, keep it for your records i'll talk a little bit about cert tech uh, this is my professional job uh, so i'd like to like to plug our services here were founded in 1978 by Harry Circalo. He's an IOR pioneer uh, award recipient from the SPE. So he's he's considered a, a pioneer in the area of IOR, specifically EOR, um, which is uh, involves our, our main competency, which is chemical enhanced oil recovery. <clears throat> our current president. Um, who still sits on our board is Malcolm Pitts. You can see his picture down uh, the second one there on the bottom. He is also a Pioneer Award recipient. So we've been lucky to have um, these pioneers uh, pave the way for, for the company that we have today and the services that we provide. You can see listed on our experience there that we worked in most most countries in the world that have oil, we've worked in those countries and analyzed uh, their reservoirs and and the uh, produced oils that they that they have to try and find ways uh, to improve <clears throat> improve overall recovery from their assets. Uh, we're privately held and we're completely independent from from many uh, chemical providers, which has been. Uh, a reason that a lot of national oil companies have liked to work with us because our results are considered to be unbiased. Uh, you can see some pictures of the equipment that we have there. So we have a laboratory here at Surtech um, where we perform core flood experiments. So uh, operators will collect samples of core and send it to us along with crude oil samples from that reservoir and we'll do core flood experiments with different chemicals, uh, solvents, <clears throat> or uh, just water floods to test uh, the best methods for improving the recovery from their oil fields. Uh, you can also see a slim tube there. That is a, a pretty unique tool that not a lot of people have uh, available uh, Surtech has a, a slim tube apparatus that's used for determining minimal miscibility pressure for <clears throat> gas EOR projects. Also, anybody can feel free to ask questions during the presentation. Yeah, here's a map just showing some of the actual field implementations that Surtech is being a part of. Uh, so besides the laboratory services, we have engineering services, which I fall under, uh, where we perform numerical simulation and facilities designs uh, for the actual implementation of enhanced oil recovery projects. Um, our, it, it, historically, we've mainly been involved in chemical uh, enhanced oil recovery, and uh, the three main types of those are 
alkali surfactant polymer floods, polymer floods or alkali polymer floods. You can see on the map that we've been involved in a number of those all around the world. Uh, notably missing West Africa there, as you can see, but we'd, we'd love to be involved in West Africa. So that's enough about CERTEC and we'll get into the main topic, which is data analytics. Uh, which is a pretty broad term in the industry and in any industry. So it's a term data analytics that, that can be used to describe many different types of skills. <clears throat> but what I've done here is I've broken down the main skills. Uh, for me, when somebody says that they are a, an oil petroleum data analytics uh, expert, these, date, these uh, bullet points here are what you'd be expected to understand <clears throat> in the competencies that you'd be expected to have. So the first one is understanding of database structure. So as I mentioned previously, relational databases are the warehouse for data in today's day and age most of the time. Uh, Postgres is a type of SQL database that is popular with a lot of people. There's a lot of uh, uh, different database uh, companies and products that people use, but they all have the same structure. And uh, knowledge of that structure is important uh, for data applying data analytics skills. So understanding how tables are linked together with primary keys and foreign keys, this is a key topic in data analytics. Leading off of that is you need to know how to query a relational database. So this data is stored in a warehouse um, relational database program, and somebody needs to be able to access that data and to ask the database questions. <clears throat> so the, the way that this is done typically is using SQL, uh, which allows you to join data tables together filter data um, and you know make transformations to data types in order to extract answers from your data. Another part of data analytics, and for me it's the it's the biggest part in my daily work life, is transformation of data into a usable format. So at CERTEC, we're consultants, like I've showed you, uh, we've worked all over the world, um, which means that we've worked with data sets from all over the world. As you can imagine, each, each company and even each oil field, um, each asset team collects, aggregates and stores data in a different way and in a different format. Typically, uh, the most common thing that you'll see is Excel spreadsheets. I've also been given Microsoft Access databases, uh, which is populated with tables. It's a form of a relational database. Uh, and then also ASCII files. ASCII files are text files, essentially, that you can open and, and they may be filled with tab delimited uh, data tables or comma delimited data tables. So you may oftentimes or every time you have to transform that data into a format that's usable to you. Um, it doesn't help anyone to just look at a table in a raw format. Typically you want to visualize that data or load it into some other program that you use for analysis. So a preliminary step would be transforming that data into a usable format. So uh, the next uh, part of data analytics is processing of data. So once you transform the data into a usable format where you filter it to include only the data points that you're interested in, you have to be able to process that data, which is perform calculations or run statistics, um, essentially finding insights from your data. The typical tool 
for that would be Python, R, or MATLAB, some sort of numerical, uh, some sort of object-oriented coding program where you can call in a data table and perform functions on that data in an attempt to gain insight. And a final competency, which arguably can be one of the uh, most important and also one of the uh, softer skills of data analytics. It uh, can, be, can be called an art form by some people, which is uh, visualizing data. <clears throat> so as an engineer, uh, we have very technical knowledge and very technical skills. And oftentimes we have to uh, report to end users, which don't have the same technical competencies as us. This requires distilling data and information into a digestible format. Typically, one of the most digestible formats are visualizations, charts, plots, line graphs, map charts. These things help laymen or managers who don't have as intricate um, engineering knowledge as you understand what you're trying, information that you're trying to present. Some of the main tools for that can be dashboarding programs such as Spotfire or Power BI or Tableau. <clears throat> you can also create uh, interactive <clears throat> visualizations uh, from different packages found in Python like Plotly or Seaborn or ggplot, which is used in R. For the last 30 years, since Microsoft Excel was uh, debuted, specifically it was debuted in 1987, so it's almost as old as me, um, pretty much this has carried the load of data analytics capabilities uh, since that time. Everybody, uh, I'm confident that most people know how to use Excel and you can perform a lot of the task I've described on the slide in Excel. But what you find to, in today's day and age and what I find on a daily basis is that data is cheap now. So what that means is that data points are abundant um, and I can get files that are millions of lines long that include millions of data points. If you try to put a table like that into Excel, the file will crash. So now you have a problem. How do I interpret this data uh, if I can't do it in Excel? A lot of people find this issue today in our industry. And the only real solution that I would offer is that you need to be proficient in Python in order to circumnavigate this issue. Uh, people who don't have these skills find themselves doing a lot of redundant tasks in Excel um, that take a lot of time and is very time consuming. So knowing Python um, can really make you shine when those scenarios present themselves. Anyways, I thought I'd share that old ad of Microsoft Excel from the 1990s. Um, as you can imagine, it was very powerful when it came out and it really has changed a lot of people's work lives and, and enhanced businesses all over the world. But the era of Excel, unfortunately, is coming to an end and now we're entering uh, the era of Python and data analytics in this new world of uh, <clears throat> big data. So another part of data analytics, which is a hot topic that I'm sure everyone here has heard about is machine learning. <clears throat> so I've given a brief introduction to what that is if you're unfamiliar here. The first mention of machine learning ever was in 1950 by Alan Turing. He's considered the uh, father of modern computing. What he said is that machine learning is an application of artificial intelligence where a computer or a machine learns from past experiences 
and makes future predictions. Pretty, pretty uh, simple description there. Fast forward to the present day. So Amazon Web Services or AWS is in a lot of ways considered the, the modern um, main stakeholder in machine learning. They house a lot of supercomputers that people access uh, to run different machine learning applications. What they describe it as is discovering patterns in end user data through algorithms, construct mathematical models based on these patterns, and then create and implement predictive applications. So I created a visual representation of <clears throat> how machine learning algorithms work essentially. So the first uh, top image you see here is showing traditional computing. Turn on a pointer for you. Yeah, so this is the traditional computing al algorithm. Uh, the way that that works is you have a computer, you input data into that computer and you load it into a program. Then you use that program to give you output. So this could be creating a table in Excel, that's your data. Excel is your program. And then using Excel to create a line chart, that's traditional computing, that's your output. In machine learning, <clears throat> you have your computer, okay? And you input data, and then you input output. What that means essentially is you're giving raw data, and then you're giving solutions uh, from that data. That can be a number of different things, but you'd give it a sample of a solution. And using the raw data and the solution, the computer creates a program which is attempting to um, create output automatically from raw data. So that's the general idea behind machine learning. <clears throat> Here are some of the uh, machine learning applications in oil and gas. So in the last decade or so, this has been a hot topic and it gets uh, more and more popular as time goes on, it seems. Um, there's different applications in different sectors of the industry, uh, which I'll explain about here in a moment. but. Some of the main applications are uh, seismic interpretation. So identifying different facies based off of seismic data, <clears throat> optimizing drilling programs. So sensors are attached to uh, many drilling operations now, providing real-time data that can be fed into machine learning, learning algorithms uh, that can inform operators how to improve operations, uh, increasing efficiencies and accuracies. Another hot topic is equipment failure identification. So as I said, sensors are cheap. So data, data points are cheap. Uh, people are putting sensors all over their oil field, monitoring flow lines and trying to get ahead of issues. So they'll monitor flow lines and use machine learning algorithms to try and attempt uh, to predict problems before they happen so that you can avoid downtime of your operations. Uh, there's also com market predictions. This is popular in, in just the stock market in general, but specific to oil and gas would be commodity pricing, trying to predict what oil or natural gas prices would be uh, moving forward is important for people planning uh, planning operations. <clears throat> and then it's specific to the United States, there is a uh, uh, hydraulic fracture optimization for unconventionals. So in the United States here, uh, for the last decade, the main focus has been on unconventional resources, which involves fracking. Uh, Conventional reservoir engineering falls apart a lot of the time when you're trying to optimize <clears throat> unconventional well design. 
So people have resorted to using statistics or machine learning models to determine what type of completion design provides the best performance in specific reservoirs and in specific basins. So that has been a major topic in the US. Uh, this quote here is from the uh, SPE technical report which is data analytics for reservoir engineers. They released that in 2020. If you're interested in these topics, I would highly recommend going and getting this report. I believe it's free for any SPE member. And uh, within this uh, technical report, there's lots of talk on applications as well as um, examples and, and uh, real, real world um, analysis from from top SPE uh, technical engineers. But what they mentioned here is that while physics-based methods such as numerical simulation, which is what I do, and analytical modeling remain in use, uh, they present major challenges for unconventional assets. So these nano Darcy rocks that we are tapping into in the United States, uh, they seem to not, um, perform in numerical simulation as conventional reservoirs do. Uh, so people have resorted to machine learning or statistical analysis to optimize those designs. Here are some snippets of uh, news articles from the JPT, so the Journal of Petroleum Technology, which is a SPE publication. These are some of the data analytics or machine learning. Uh, articles that are, are recent, okay? So you can see some of the things that they're talking about. Integrated workflow aids, data digitization for offshore drilling. Okay, they're trying to automate as much stuff as possible. But they're, they're, hoping, they're hoping that machine learning can, uh, can improve efficiencies and also reduce the number of man hours needed to accomplish goals, which reduces costs. <clears throat> Uh, you can see real-time sensors allow data-driven monitoring of flow measurement systems. That, that ties into the flow assurance idea where you have sensors all over your oil field uh, on flow lines trying to uh, get ahead of problems that you may have with plugging from paraffins or hydrate production, things like that. Um, typically in the past, you found out once, you, once uh, your flow line was plugged it up and, and nothing was coming into your production facility. Unfortunately, it would it would be a lot better to to recognize that a problem is is building uh, before a production facility goes down, uh, which can you know seriously hurt cash flow uh, from your operation. Uh, you can see an article talking about well spacing. So that would be uh, an unconventional application here in the US where they use statistics and machine learning algorithms to determine uh, how they should space their wells to maximize performance. There's this idea uh, if you're too, your wells are spaced too far apart, then you're missing reserves in between them. If they're too close together, then you can get diminishing returns. So. Uh, they're using machine learning to find the sweet spot there. And then uh, you can see a mention of a global database. So lots of companies, people I know are starting companies where they're aggregating data. Uh, so I'll show you a dashboard built by uh, a company of a friend of mine, uh, <clears throat> which is Sabit Energy. They're based in the Permian Basin here in the United States. And what they do is aggregate uh, geologic and geophysics data into a robust database uh, and, and make that available to clients for them to, to perform machine learning or data analytics to determine ways and methods to optimize their after operations or well completions. And then uh, there's a final article down there talking about carbon sequestration. So this, uh, these techniques are being used in um, in other sectors as well, specifically um, in CCS. So 
the most useful skills that I have that I use on a daily basis um, pertaining to data analytics, uh, like I like I mentioned, my actual title is a senior reservoir engineer. So I'm doing numerical modeling <clears throat> on reservoirs uh, as a as my main task, but data analytics is used to get me uh, to get me to the end results that I often get. So I would say that every day I'm using Python and mostly I'm using it for ETL purposes. So ETL is extract, transform, and load. It's sort of a uh, blanket acronym, uh, which describes the process of aggregating data together. So I get lots of data from, like I said, different oil fields in different formats and oftentimes um, not in a, a good usable format. So I have to pull all of the data together and then transform it in a way that I can use and then load it into the softwares that I use. <clears throat> uh, the, the other thing that I do is I cr create interactive visualizations uh, that I use to relay data to my team and also to our clients. I'll do this using Python a lot of times uh, if it's just for internal purposes or I'll build a uh, a dashboard in Spotfire uh, for a client. Spotfire is a dashboard program similar to Tableau or Power BI. So this concludes the presentation itself, uh, but what I have ready for everyone is uh, some show and tell, with some different items that I've put together to highlight some of these skills. So this is an example of a dashboard. This is uh, by Sabit Energy. Um, this is seismic data in the Permian Basin. So this is just an example of an interactive deliverable. So this is this would have been built um, using using Python in the background to process the data, and then they're using Kepler to visualize the data. So you can see that it's interactive. You can uh, change change the time scale here and see how activity is built over time. You can hover on points and, and see additional information there. So at CERTEC, our main interest is enhanced oil recovery. Uh, so I've worked with <coughs> uh, numerous people over numerous years to build uh, the most comprehensive EUR database um, that I've, I've seen anywhere to date. So we have 2,700 projects uh, and it was, it was desired by my bosses to create a visualization um, showing the location of all the EUR projects uh, all around the world. So I've made this, this uh, 3D globe here using Plotly, uh, which is a Python program. And uh, you can see that you can hover on different projects and see um, the name of the project and the EUR uh, technology that was applied there. This is a visualization of a reservoir in uh, the North Sea. So offshore of Norway, uh, this is a field that used to be operated by Equinor. Uh, you can see there's a tutorial on how I built this data um, it, here. This is on the, my medium.com account, which I shared the link to uh, on, on the uh, first slide. <clears throat> so I talk about how I use Python to uh, interpret seismic data and eventually end on a final visualization, which is this, which shows the well bores. The perforations are colored in red you can get information by hovering on uh, on the wells as well. So that's that's a nice representation of some of the things that you can do um, with Python in terms of visualization. Another main topic in data analytics is dashboarding. 
So the creation of dashboards for end users to sort through and investigate data is very useful and very desirable by um, management as well as private clients. So here you can see a dashboard that I put together. Um, this is an analysis of steam flood projects all over the uh, all over the world and it's analysis of different properties. So you can gain insights from these plots. So you can see uh, the typical crude API gravity uh, for thermal projects that have been applied around the world. You can see the average permeability for these projects. So it appears that it applies to crude oils with a <clears throat> low API gravity, which means they're very viscous and a high permeability. You can also see other properties here. Um, I've got tabs tabs in the spreadsheet so I can uh, analyze the amount of projects and the type of EUR application applied uh, by continent. And I can filter down to specific countries and see all the projects that have been performed in Brazil, for example. This is a dashboard that I built for a client. This is a Middle Eastern reservoir. You can see a snapshot of the reservoir uh, model there. But I can create linked data. So you can see I have a map of the field here. I can click on different wells to see their production history, oil, water, and gas. I have an aggregation table here so you can see um, you can filter this and see more data, as well as this table here showing uh, when each well was completed. Bubble maps for QM oil showing the most productive portions of the field. <clears throat> Analysis of the uh, PVT di distribution throughout the field. And analysis of uh, special special core analysis data or SCAL data uh, for relative permeability curves that are used in the numerical simulation model. So as you can see, typically this data would be aggregated maybe in a spreadsheet or just uh, put together in a presentation. <clears throat> That's the historic way of presenting and sharing data. It's not a horrible way to do it but in today's world, there's better ways to do it. And data analytics skills allow you uh, the opportunity to do that. Um, yeah, the last, the last thing that I'll show here, uh, this is raw production data that I received <clears throat> for a field in Colombia. So the main thing to note here, so my boss gave me this spreadsheet and says, we need to create an FHF file, which is a field history file used in numerical simulation. That file looks like this. So it's each well uh, listed as time series data stacked in a single table. The problem here is I have hundreds of wells. I think there's 300 wells in the spreadsheet all on a different tab. So if you don't know Python, you'd have to go through each tab and manually make this file. But what I was able to do in about 15 minutes is write a code that goes, it goes automatically to each tab, grabs all of the data that I need and puts it into a text file without me having to do anything manually. So that I think really exemplifies the power of Python and how you can really supercharge your workflow with data analytics skills um, and really make a name for yourself in this industry. That's all I've got for the presentation today. Hope I didn't bore you too much. So I think we'll open it up now to any questions or comments that anybody has. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh for the uh, presentation. 
Uh, I have a question to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my my first question is that um, in terms of one assessing data for um, data analytics, uh, how how is it feasible? Sorry, can you say ask that again? I said in terms of one acquiring data data for uh, uh, data analytics in the um, upstream sector, uh, how is it feasible? Maybe I need a production data, I need data from the field so that I can carry out my data analytics. I want to visualize the, the flowing behavior of the world. How is it feasible? Sure. Uh, yeah, so it can be really hard to <clears throat> find data. I think that's what, what you're saying, um, especially real field data, because a lot of companies uh, keep that confidential. So one place that I found, um, I'll type it in the chat here, uh, but it's uh, Equinor uh, is an oil company based in Norway, and they've released a lot of uh, data to the public domain, specifically to advance uh, data analytics uh, in the oil and gas industry. So specifically, uh, the visualization that I showed you of the reservoir with the wells, um, that is the ball reservoir. And they've made all the data from that field available, everything from drilling files, log files, um, ESP data, production volumes, all of this has been made available. And that can be found if you search uh, ball in Equinor, I'll, I'll do it now and put the link in the chat. Because you're right that it can be uh, hard to find data to use in order to learn how to do these skills. So in general, I believe has, has the question been attended to? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, Agnes Obi Kanu, you raised your hand. Please, can you go ahead and ask the question, Agnes? Okay, so my question is, um, I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm clear. Okay, so my question is, when building a machine, uh, my question is, when building a machine learning model, what are the factors that can make your model predict wrong results, even though you took all the steps necessary to build your model. I don't know if you got my question. Yeah, can you ask it uh, one more time? I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, my question is, when building a machine learning model and you took all the steps necessary to make the model as good as possible, like all the steps, what are the factors that can still make the model predict results that are far from the truth? What are the factors that can still make the model predict wrong results, even though you took the steps required in building a model? Sure. Um, yeah, there's many factors that can uh, be wrong. Uh, there's, a there's a topic called uh, bias, inherent bias that can be, uh, that can infiltrate your machine learning model. Okay, so if you if you are not careful, um, you can actually provide input data that um, is inherently biased. So a way to think of that is maybe you're only interpreting um, well log information where um, for successful wells. And in order to get a more accurate picture of the entire field, you need to include the dry holes as well. So that, so, so that is an issue. Um, there's also um, uh, some expertise needed to understand when your model is overfitted. So what can happen is you provide data and you create a machine learning model that is too good. Uh, okay, so that means it, let's say it, 
it fits your test data one with 100% accuracy. Um, there's a high potential that that model would be overfitted. That means that the actual uh, performance of predictions or the predictability of that model is much lower, even though the historical accuracy of the model is 100%. I hope that uh, answers your question well enough. Okay, yeah, yes, thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, we have a, a, a Daniel Olagun Jews. Your hand is up, please. Can you go ahead and ask the question, Daniel? Okay, thank you, Eli. Um, I really enjoyed your presentation. And um, I'm familiar with Python. I use Python to work myself, but I'm more curious about, um, because in my understanding, mostly Python, uh, actually it's used on the command line you know, to write one or two codes and you get your results. But I'm interested in the graphic user interfaces. Are there specific applications that are required for ones to know or learn that can help you with the visualizations and what have you? Please maybe you can throw more light on that because uh, for me, you've given us an overview of what we can do using data via Python. That's fair enough. But there are some specifics I feel is missing in terms of, okay, I have production data now. I want to visualize uh, the production data and I want to predict what and what do I do? I, I can write a Python code. But how do I visualize it? Is there specific applications? Are there modules we need to be able to use to help us get to that point? Thank you, please. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So um, <clears throat> the visualizations that I showed you, uh, besides the dashboard, so the globe, and the evolved data reservoir that I showed you, those were built in Python using a package called Plotly. Um, so the end result uh, that you receive when you run the Python code. So like you said, I'll, sh I'll share my screen again, actually. Like you said, um, uh, Python is just it writ code in the command line, right? So this is Python code. When I execute it, it opens a window in my browser and renders a, uh, this is a Java-based HTML uh, visualization uh, coming straight as a result of a Python code. So what I can do for you is I'll share the different um, packages that you can do this with in Python. Uh, specifically, Plotly is the most powerful one, in, in my opinion. But then there are dashboard programs. So uh, like, I, like I shared with you here, this program, this is Spotfire. OK, so you can see the symbol for Spotfire here. Um, it's a dashboarding program similar to Tableau or Power BI. But this is, so I have just data tables that I've loaded in here and, and it's very easy to create line charts. Um, so anybody can do this if you spend some time uh, with Spotfire and follow some of their basic tutorials. Uh, but it, what happens is it becomes a very uh, useful and powerful tool for visualization. So I'm going to type in the chat now some of these uh, programs and applications for you to investigate to get better at visualizations. There are literally hundreds, maybe thousands of more uh, programs, but these are the ones that, that I prefer. The last three are dashboard applications, um, specifically in oil and gas, Spotfire seems to be the most popular. Okay, thank you so much for that response. 
So I, I want to confirm if anybody has any other question. I want to confirm if anybody has any other question. You can raise your hands up or unmute your mic and speak, please. If not, we would move and continue to end the event. While the lecturer was speaking, I'd like to make us understand that we had the presence of the section chair of the SP Abuja section who joined us, the person of Madam Amina Den Madami. Hello, ma'am. Would you like to say a word or two? Of a word of remarks? Yeah, hello, good evening. I, did, I wanted to just sneak in, catch what I could catch and sneak out. I didn't know that anyone had seen me. It was very, it was a very interesting lecture and I, I caught on, well, old school as I am, I was able to catch on on some of the things. And um, I was also going to ask about visualization plotting. And I think there's another one because I've started learning Py, um, Python as well. There was something else, another package that can be used for drawing graphs and stuff. Is it the same as um, the plot Py and the Seaborn? Yeah, so there's, um, there's a lot of different packages uh, mm -hmm. built specifically for visualizations in, plot, mm -hmm. in uh, Python. Uh, so what the visualizations that I showed specifically were built in Plotly. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Very nice. Thank you very much. It was a very engaging lecture and we hope to have you again, you know, to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. No problem. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, YP, the YP team. Well done. It was a very nice one. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, ma. Thank you, Secretary Chair, for joining us. So, for those that I have that also joined, would like to call this is like a call that you should join the Society of Professional Engineers. Of course, the SPE does a lot of these lectures to educate all of its members. We have professional member benefits and student member benefits, of course, which you can see on the screen. And should you want to be a part of the Society of Petroleum Engineers Abuja section, kindly contact our membership chairperson. The email is on your screen or send an email to our section, spabuja section info at gmail.com. Of course, you can contact us on all of the social media platforms you see on the screen. All of the videos of our events, past events, and this event is live on our YouTube channel, spabuja section. So you can always go back and watch all of them. Going forward, on the fourth, on the 9th of December, 2021, we have, of course, an amazing monthly technical session, which is on the theme is gas, a key resource for green energy transition. We have an avalanche of amazing speakers, six of them, I think, and I, I really advise that you should be part of this. Kindly click on the registration link, bits.l, deck, MTM and register to be part of this session, 4 to 6 p.m. on Thursday, December 9th. Thank you, and we hope to see you at our next event. To end this event, we would like to have a closing remark, and at this juncture, we would love to call the alternate YP chair, SP of Uja section, Daniel Olagunju, for the closing remark, sir. Thank you, Orphan. Uh, pardon me, I can be on video now. I wish I can, so please bear with me. I would like to thank everyone for taking our time to be here, especially our speaker, uh, Mr. Eli. It's a pleasure having you around and to talk to us about data analytics. Um, for someone like me, I'm not new to data analytics, but I think you've opened my eyes to certain things and I think I'll gladly explore. And I want to believe most of us are. I'm actually surprised um, the section chair is actually into Python. I think I have to push more for myself. That's what it means. And I believe that should go for every other person. Well, I, I don't want to use old school like she used to say, but permit me to say young school guys. I think if the section chair is running for Python, I think we can do better. So I would like to say thank you for joining. And I believe we've got one or two things and hope to see you in the next program. Thank you for coming. And please do have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. So at this juncture, we close the session. But a brief interactive session before we say bye.
Great, thank you. Thank you, Tusa. Thank you, sir. All right. Everybody have a good day and uh, thanks for thanks for, thanks for entertaining me. Hey, thanks, uh, Eli. Uh, we appreciate it.